This video begins the Exploiting Windows Vulnerabilities section with Stack Overflow. We will talk about the Vuln server we're going to use as a target, how to fuzz it from Kali, how to use the Immunity Debugger, and targeting the extended instruction pointer. Vuln server can be downloaded from this URL and run on Windows. It listens on port 9999 and has several vulnerable functions we can attack. If you're going to run it on a client version of Windows, like Windows 7 or Windows 10, it works fine as it is, although it's best to use a 32-bit version. If you run it on a server, you need to go into Advanced System Settings and turn off DEP. Turn it down to this level. Turn on DEP for Essential Windows Programs and Services only. For this lesson, you do not want the Data Execution Prevention feature protecting the server for the attacks we're using here. You can connect to it from another machine. We're going to use Kali with Netcat. And when you give it the help command, you see it has various commands here that take various parameters. These don't really do anything, but it looks rather like an email server. And the command we're going to use is trun. Trun takes a value. If you send it trun with a K, it just says trun complete and does not crash. So we'll write a Python program that connects to the server on the right port and then sends an arbitrary number of capital A's. Trun space period and then a number of capital A's, then carriage return and line feed. You can, if you send a thousand A's, the server works without crashing, but 2000 cause a crash and Windows displays an error message. So let's take a look at that. Here is the Windows server and it's running the software, but I'll stop it and restart it. You just double click on Vuln server and it's now listening. That's all there is to it. If you go to your Kali machine, you can connect here on port 9999. Help shows you the list of commands and trun followed by any reasonable length string just gives you the trun complete message. So, if you take a look at that fuzzer, it's here, and you see it's got the IP address of the server and the port. In comes the length, and then it sends trun space period, that number of A's, followed by carriage return and line feed. So if I run that with a thousand characters, it works. And if I run it with 2,000 characters, it doesn't return the crun complete message, and that's because it has crashed. And you see here, Valden server has stopped working. So that's the main goal of fuzzing, is to find a crash. Once you've found a crash, you might have to find out how exploitable it is. So you have to run the server in a debugger. We're going to use the immunity debugger. And when you send it 2000 A's, the message at the bottom tells you what command caused the crash. Here it was an access violation when writing to 4141, 4141, which is the hexadecimal code for capital A, capital A, capital A, capital A. So we now have got a write instruction that we control, but that's not terribly easy to exploit. So it's worth fuzzing a little more. And you can find that 3000 A's cause an execute crash, where it's executing an address we control, and that's easier to exploit. To find out exactly which of the capital A's ended up in the instruction pointer, we need a non-repeating pattern of characters. Here's one way to do it, just with three Python loops. One that goes from ASCII 0 to 4, one that goes from 0 to 9, and another that goes from 0 to 9. So I get a pattern of 2,000 non-repeating strings, 32 bits long, 000A, 001A, 002A, up to 499A. So I can make a version of the previous program that sends 1,000 capital A's, and then that non-repeating 2,000 character sequence for a total of 3,000 characters. And when you send that to the server, it crashes, of course, on an execute instruction, and it's trying to execute this address, 35, 32, 41, 31. 
If you read those and turn them back into ASCII in reverse order, it's 1A25. So that's the pattern you see here, 1A25, just a little more than halfway through that 2000 byte sequence at character 1006. So that makes it possible to more precisely target the EIP by putting 2006 capital A's, then the four bytes to hit the EIP, and then enough bytes afterwards to keep the total length of the attack at 3000. If the total length doesn't stay 3000, I won't be targeting the same crash. And now those characters I chose end up in the instruction pointer 42, 43, 44, 45 which is BCDE. So, if you look at our server, phone server has crashed, and phone server was running outside the debugger, so we need to close that, and now launch immunity. Here's the immunity debugger, and inside immunity, we have to run phone server. When a debugger launches the software, it begins in the paused state, as you can see in the lower right, and you have to start it here so it's running. Now you can send the attack. Let me take a look at my files here. All right, send characters. Here's the code that sends the characters with 1000 A's and then that three loop series that creates the 2000 non repeating characters. So this is send characters. I can run that. And when I do it, if I go back to look at my Windows machine, it has crashed, and here it is crashing at 31, 41, 32, 35. So that shows you. I control the instruction pointer, and to get a more precise attack, I just have to look at the target EIP code. This now sends 2006 A's, then BCDE, and then enough F's to make the total 3,000. That's what it sends to the server as the attack. So I can run that one, but before I do that, I have to restart the server here with debug restart. And yes, now it's listening again. And when I send that one, all right, it's not listening to me for some reason. It has paused. Ah, yes, when you debug restart, this is a common mistake you may make. You have to hit this button to make the server run. Otherwise, it's not listening. Even though it says restart, it does not relaunch it. It loads it in the debugger and puts it in the paused condition. So now I can send that code to the server and it crashes. And now at the bottom, I see 42, 43, 44, 45. So, I have control of the instruction pointer. 